Welcome to Center of Light. All my Yana Vites here on a Tuesday night. We're going to hang out with a sister of light, Kelly Marie Kerr. Welcome to Center of Light. Radio to ignite your soul and the transformation station. Strap in all my brother and sister astral knots as we launch for an inner space. That's exactly where our destination is tonight. Last week, I was supposed to have Kelly on Center of Light Radio, but she overslept. <laughs> She's in the UK and did not hear. She says, Keith, I swear to you, I never miss my alarm. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but it wasn't time. So tonight is the season for uh, reappearance of the Kerr. I called her in the green room. The Kerr, Kelly Marie Kerr. We're going to be talking about the God design. Secrets of the mind, body, and soul. And she's going to take us into places we never thought about Christianity. And it's a beautiful idea. It's a symphony of deliciousness. It is. She's very clear. She's very thorough. She has a wonderful voice. It's like she's singing when she's talking. It makes for an easy way in because it's pleasant. And you will see things, I promise you, in a very different light. A very different light. And a little later, when it feels right, if at all, I would like to have a dialogue with Kelly. I trust her. Absolutely. We're talking in the green room how she and I are connected as brother and sister energy. And there, there's no denying that between she and I. It's just a connection simply of, I know you. There's, there's no effort in between her and I's relationship. <clears throat> I would like to talk to her about some reservations that I have about a presentation I would be doing at 9 o'clock Central Time if I chose to do it. It has to do with missing children titled Gone. And I don't mean the comp, which is sad enough in and of itself. Just children end up missing because some knucklehead cuckoo person is walking in the street nabbing children. I was talking about, I'm, I would be talking about something way more sinister than that. Not that there's comparison. You lose, you lose your child, you lose your child period. Point being, I'm not sure. It's not because I'm afraid. I have apprehension. It's not time. Or is it simply necessary? I'm on the fence with that. Because someone who is connected to Swamji, my deity, my master, I made contact with them and they put to me three questions. Is it of the light? <laughs> what do you hope to get from it? In other words, what's the end result? And can you handle the consequences? It put things in perspective, which is first and foremost, is this beneficial to those who would hear it? I'm still not sure we're going to get to that dialogue later. In this forum, you will see a group of links. Check them out. Donate button. It is how I am able to sustain myself to do what I'm able, to, what I'm doing now. My love, my passion to expand the awareness of my cosmic brothers and sisters, temporarily, temporarily embodied. We call humanity. So donate button link up there. Give from your heart. Give what you can. Give to another cause. I really don't care. Give. You have to be able to to create the amalgamation the marriage between the giving and the receiving and equally or as powerful and equally or as blissful in doing it's amazing that selfless giving I'm not trying to sound like an evangelist you know giving all these words just in giving to someone I, I do it often many of us do it often uh, also you will see a link in there um, that takes you to my YouTube channel subscribe Give me some thumbs up. Give me some comments of more of the scientists, doctors, spiritualists, healers, energy people, whatever it is that you would like to see more of, and I will respond. I Everyone will tell you I respond in a matter of three days at most, likely immediately. That's how important you are to me. I am now doing readings. I don't do psychic readings. Yes, I am psychic, and I'm psycho. And I can kick you when you side if need be. I don't come at it from that approach. I'm here to empower you. I'm here to help you figure out the dance for yourself. 
I will give you my time, $30. You will not beat this price anywhere for this level of quality as well as quantity. I will give you what you want, but in so doing, you have to receive what I want to give you, what you, you may not like. And finally, before we move into the segment of the show where we bring Kelly on, the cur. If you want to call into the show later, which I'm sure Kelly would love that, I've devised a way to have open lines. Check this out. You have to go into my personal Facebook account, uh, Keith Blanchard, and send me a Facebook inbox video call. It cannot be a phone call. It has to be a video call because the video engages the speaker so everyone can hear you. If you don't want to be on the video, simply when you call, just turn the video away from you. But I need that speaker to be live. In order for this to happen without an echo, endless loop, you have to have headphones. So if you got some headphones around, we're going to go into a small pause. Um, maybe use the time to get your headphones, put them in your thing, give me a call. Uh, when I open up that line, if this conversation, which I know is going to get really delicious and very juicy, really quick we're going to take a short pause and what I what I am going to do in this segment is play a video for my guest tonight Kelly Marie Kerr the Kerr about how this somewhat all started for her this passion that she heard God speak to her she spoke back and in, in asking about a certain path and it started to reveal itself we'll let that all unfold Take this time to watch this video. We're going to come right back. We're going to bring Kelly on the air. Let me see if I can find this. Welcome everyone, Kelly. Here we go. Enjoy. Since first publishing the video titled Sacred Secretion, Christ Oil, True Anointing, Heaven on Earth, I have been inundated with comments and questions regarding the facts and theories that surround this amazing ancient truth. Questions such as what exactly is the sacred secretion? Uh, Jesus can't really be an oil or a seed, so the sacred secretion isn't just DMT. Um, what do you mean that frankincense and myrrh are male and female? How can I preserve and transmute the sacred secretion? What is a human vibratory frequency? Um, what is the relevance of 33? Are the teachings of Kundalini and the sacred secretion the same thing? Is melatonin the key? Um, what is Bhakti? Do I really need to be a vegan? So Jesus was a real person and a celestial prophecy? What's biomagnetism and bioelectricity? What is the timing of the sacred secretion and why? Why is the sacred secretion shrouded in so much mystery? What's Satan and Lucifer got to do with it? So Christ isn't returning? Does too much acid in the body really cause our bioelectricity to short circuit? Now, in order to answer all of these questions and more, I decided to write a book comprised of all of the various perspectives and evidence for this incredible phenomenon. The creator of the universe, aka God, designed everything in perfect correspondence and it is up to us to recognize utilize and honor the limitless power that is available to us through unconditional love my book the god design secrets of the mind body and soul is now available to purchase it just follow the link appearing on your screen now or you can use the link in the description box below. It's called The God Design, Secrets of the Mind, Body and Soul. And it is a thorough, cross-referenced and evidentially backed examination of both the physical chemistry 
and the spiritual principles that align to create what has become known as the sacred secretion. The chapters include vital information that I have sought to compile and explain in a digestible um, way that can easily be applied to everyday life. This step-by-step -step breakdown, explanation and guide covers and compares many strands of this universal God-given gift. Biblical symbolism, the study of exogenesis and lunisolar fusion, ancient alchemy, Kaya Kalpa yoga, modern science and other doctrines as well are all explained and examined within the book and they all come together to highlight one simple beautiful universal truth here is a list of just a few of the highlights to be found within the book the fascinating composition and ability of the cerebrospinal fluid and nerve fluid Dozens of King James Bible references decoded and explained emotionally and physiologically. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield, Psalm 84, 11. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Genesis 28, 12. Other things such as the incredible nerve plexuses, chakras and churches of revelations, um, sexual vital fluids, divine male and female energies, the correct timing for observing the sacred secretion explained, biochemistry and melatonin conversion, uh, the beauty and magic of the stars, the importance of the pineal gland and calcite crystals, how exactly to enhance the body's vibratory frequency and why this is paramount for total health, mind, body and spirit. Insights for abundance yielding nutrition, exercise habits, prayer techniques, meditation guides, and achieving a vibration or attitude of unconditional love and bhakti. And the exact chemical components that equate to the manifested feeling achieved by the successful preservation and raising of the sacred secretion. As a bonus, the foreword and appendix of the book, The God Design, has been written by the amazing Dr. John R. Francis, who is the author of The Mystic Way of Radiant Love. Now, a lot of time, research and due diligence has been done in order to complete this book. I really hope that reading it fascinates and inspires you as much as writing it did for me. The sacred secretion is a true phenomenon and gift from God, both physically and spiritually. I would like to thank everyone who has commented on, liked or shared the original video. And I would also like to give special thanks to the Seek Vision patrons. Your kind-hearted generosity has made it possible to take the time necessary to complete this book. Now, as usual, I will quickly provide links to my website, yoga app, obviously buying the book, and Patreon. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. There are more biblical allegory videos and explainer videos in production. Um, God bless you all, God bless the world, and thank you God for all of our blessings, big and small. Peace and light everybody.
Welcome back to Center of Light Radio. Now you understand or have an idea of the energy that Kelly, as a personified soul, being of light, embodies. You understand her way. You understand her vernacular. It's very simple. It's very musical. She has no agenda. If you, if you didn't pick up on that right away, of course you did. <laughs> so I want to ask two questions. The first question, before I bring Kelly on, the first question I want to ask the listening audience, the viewing audience, hello everyone, by the way, you sexy, beautiful human creatures, is, would you like to hear something different in the field of spirituality? Something cool, something invigorating, refreshing. Send me an exclamation point. Second question is, is your heart open to receive it? Send me two exclamation points. Let's get down to Center of Light Radio business. Let me get to the bio of this powerhouse of divine light. <clears throat> Tonight's show is titled The God Design. And I she, we talked about titling the show, I said, oh, please, let's use the God design. It just sounded so... Mm. Secrets of the mind, body, and soul. Here's Kelly's bio. Kelly Marie Kerr, the Kerr, <laughs> is a writer and YouTube creator. She is known for her sacred secretion explainer videos and metaphysical esoteric Bible interpretations. In her latest book, The God Design, Secrets of the Mind, Body, and Soul, Kelly Marie Kerr examines, compares, and parallels spiritual teachings with scientific theories and facts in order to explain what has become known as the sacred secretion. Biblical symbols and metaphors are decoded. Listen, listen to this. Biblical symbols and metaphors are decoded. That's called research. Inner research is where it starts. It goes inner to outward. It's about the desire and having the fire to move into a place following a rabbit. Even if though you always end up with rabbit shit in your hand, you still ain't willing to follow every possible rabbit to have a greater experience. Biblical symbols and metaphors are decoded with the aid of the latest scientific discoveries and theories. What will be revealed is the marvelous design of the human body made in the image and likeness of God, Genesis 1.27. By realizing and observing certain sacred truths, the magnificent potential of the God design can be unlocked and activated. You can find more about Kelly at www.seekvision. Oh, 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 I lost my notes. One moment, one moment www.seekvision.co co dot uk Welcome to Center of Light Radio The Cur Hello <laughs> So I want to acknowledge one of your biggest fans and I listen listen I understand we have to pay people off sometime, but it seems like this guy either really likes you and your beautiful work, or you send him a check in the mail. His name is John David Powers. He repeats over and over and over how much he loves you and your work and your book. He even went so far as to say that you have the second greatest book he has ever read. Are you feeling me? I know. Me? <laughs> He's so lovely. He reached out to me um, on a direct message on Instagram, and we just got talking. I mean, energetically, I could tell straight away that he was coming from a really good place. And, um, yeah, we've had some really nice chats. So good to see you. Well, Kelly, I'm looking in the, the room, and I will forewarn you it's my payback for you not showing up last week. No, I'm going <laughs> to harp on you, sis, about this. I'm going to poke you and I'm going to rib you. Um, 
is that I'm going to interrupt you tonight, likely, not intentionally. It's likely you're going to say something that I'm going to say, stop. <laughs> Please okay. expound on that because I'm going at it from a learned point of view. This arrogant bastard will say he knows a lot about a lot, and he does. But I like you. <laughs> I like your work. I like what you do. It humbles me. You're into a field that I truly know nothing about. But it is so tantalizing to me because your delivery is so effortless. It makes me believe you without a... It's easy for me to say yes to listen to you. How does that all sound to you, John, me? Is this validation? Uh, obviously, you know how to take it on the chin and it's not an ego stroke. But how does this sound to you in the short time that you truly have been doing this work? Um, honestly, I could say to you, hand on heart, that if somebody told me this is what I would be doing a few years ago, I would have said no way because there's no way I can put myself out there <laughs> in this way. Um, so just in terms of confidence alone, um, my entire being has been kind of completely transformed. Um, and I don't mean that in a way of being shy because I've always been outgoing and I've got a background in acting and theatre and various things. I mean that in a way of um, being so spiritually convicted and having had such strong, clear messages, if you like, um, coming through that if I didn't share and I didn't follow up on what I've asked God for and what has been coming through, then, you know, I feel that would be a real shame. And, yeah. I do know, Kelly, that knowing you in audience, you will know this bones to soul by the time we come to the end of this interview. The one thing I know about you, Kelly, is you are con you are absolutely convinced. You are convicted. You are addicted to finding not not only finding the truth, but when you find a love nugget, one of my new favorite words, love nugget. If it's an everlasting everlasting gobstopper, you're ready to start the dance. You're right, and I know that about you, and that's what makes it so effortless for me to want to hear more about the God design, the secrets of the mind, body, and the soul. Kelly, if you would, I kind of paraphrased it a little earlier in a poor attempt at that and the credit you're due, about what happened to you from Kelly to <clears throat> Kelly. What was it you declared to the universe, stated, prayed, humbled yourself, became vulnerable. How did this actually transpire for you to where we sit now? Um, okay, so it all started with a scripture, uh, Matthew 6, 33, and 33 has been a reoccurring number for me. Please share um, that scripture. Many, Please share that scripture. The scripture is, uh, but seek ye first the kingdom oh my of gosh. God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm. And um, it, it just kept, that scripture just kept popping up in my life, in church, through people, you know, in my Bible, from the word of the day, different scenarios. And I kept thinking, I am seeking though, aren't I? Like I'm, you know, doing everything that one sort of should do, as it were. So... You know, why do I still feel like there's something that I haven't quite grasped yet? Why? Let, do me, I let me cut you off there. I think this is very important. Why, if you can, in your best attempt to, to try to recall, why did you feel that ongoing thing that did not... No, why did you feel that? In other words, you went from wanting this and then you questioned yourself. So what did that feel like to be you? What was that thing? Um, it felt almost like God was trying to talk to me <laughs> in many different ways. 
and that for some reason I wasn't quite able to understand what God was saying to me. But you did know at the time it was occurring, it was actually occurring. You just didn't know what to do with that for a while, right? Yeah, okay. totally. Okay. Okay. And um, okay. I've always had crazy clear dreams ever since I was a child. I mean, I can remember dreams from when I was like five or six years old. And, uh, you know, I have ongoing dream diaries and that's been the fuel for a lot of my writing. Right. Um, and around this time, the dreams just became even more wild and the things that were coming through, a lot of them were things For example, can you give me one? You don't have to tell the personal parts of the dream, but is there one that you could share that kind of would describe what you're conveying? Um, one was that I was talking to a man <laughs> who was crying and um, I felt, even though it's weird because I guess it was a lucid dream because I kind of knew that I was asleep but I was, you know, completely dreaming and I felt so much compassion for this person and then at the very end of the dream they revealed themselves to be Jeremiah. Wow. And I woke up <clears throat> and I was like, wow, Jeremiah? No, surely not. And I'm quite a practical, um, you know, I like theory, like I like science. So in many instances, I didn't really want to believe necessarily that, you know, I'd seen Jeremiah in a dream. But the compassion that I had felt for this person in my dream, be they or be they not Jeremiah, made me read again the book of Jeremiah. And then as I was reading the book of Jeremiah, I had this newfound compassion for, you know, that that person within, you know, however, I know the, the Bible is interpreted by so many people in so many different ways. So be he a literal person or, you know, a meta, uh, a metaphor for something bigger, you know, who knows? I think both. That's my view. I think, you know, these things do work on many levels, and that is what makes it so Infinite ridiculously beautiful. Infinite levels. Infinite levels. Not only the Bible, but your entire life. Because the people that you love, the people that you associate with, your life as it unfolds itself is a living scripture. Because when you lay your body down, what script did a said person live? So you are a living testimony that will forever live in the Akashic Hall of Records for all time. In fact, if you can go to the Akashic Hall of Records right now, you would say, you would actually pull out of the Dewey Decimal System thing you pull out that says, amazing, isn't it, that you arrived and this card validates to you that we knew you were coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And I love that you you said that you felt this compassion into you. It felt like Jeremiah. And I, I, I would actually agree and support that it was truly Jeremiah. Whatever Jeremiah, that was of such a high light vibration, but the name was clearly delivered. And I know that to be so because the compassion becomes the vehicle through which the revelation of whatever energy you're speaking with, the compassion is a clear highway. Wouldn't you agree with that? And so your life became this unfoldment till now, following the experience, reading the book of Jeremiah. So to me, that truly lays down the groundwork. You will know it by the fruit it bears. Yeah, exactly. And, and pretty much from that point on, every dream or vision that I had, I would go back to the Bible and find the different elements of that dream or vision in the Bible. And then, you know, figure out, A, what that meant for me, but then on a bigger, in a bigger way, what does that mean, you know, for sort of universally, if you like, like how can you apply these things in that way? Um, and then one night I had seven dreams in the same night and I 
didn't realize until actually quite a lot later when I was looking back in a dream journal that it was the 7th of the seventh month it was the 7th of July and um when I, I looked at the bullet points and counted them off as seven, I was like, okay, seven, seven, seven. And, you know, it's just little things like that, like noticing the synchronicities and noticing how God's just trying to make certain things stand out to us that God wants us to pay attention to. And those seven dreams in particular, again, one of them was... Um, highlighting some of the things in Jeremiah. There was um, some Jacob references in there. And I mean, you know, you could say that, yeah, I was reading the Bible a lot, so of course I would be dreaming about it as well. And I don't deny, you know, that that is part of it. Um, But that particular night was actually the first time that I realized that some of my dreams were based on the future. And um, one of them was something to do with Um, a terrible thing that happened in Brussels shortly after and I literally couldn't believe that I'd dreamt it like that was the first time that that had knowingly happened to me before Um, and I don't know you know Keith you would probably know more because it's not something that I follow up on with my research whether that's you know kind of dream travel if you like or something else but you know, my friend Catherine, I think she's still here, was, um, you know, talking to me every day about these dreams. And at one point, I think um, they were so profound that she was actually like, dude, what is going on with you? Um, And eventually, um, I had this intense experience where I saw blue oil rising through me and as it was reaching like where my brain would be I guess um it was kind of creating these sort of like inner fireworks and then as I woke up I could actually feel it happening and it felt like pins and needles nice pins and needles you know like butterflies um all over me (laughs) and a rush of a rush of heat flowing all over me kind of like I was being washed or um cleansed purified if you like and then the color of it changed and it was such a blinding white light like it was it was fluorescent you know it was just startling and but previous to this I'd had a dream that I had made an explainer video for the true anointing of Christ so obviously like I'd looked up like other people's videos on the anointing or whatever and thought well yeah like of course so what is the true anointing of Christ and then when I had this dream, I or this experience, this feeling, I realized this is the true anointing of Christ. This is what God wants me to explain to people. But if I just go out there and be like, hi, you know, I've had this feeling and blah, blah, blah. Nobody really knows me. It's not going to have any effect it's not like, you know, probably go under the rug and I'll just look back at, you know, that crazy little time that happened. But then obviously, sure enough, I didn't move on it. And I've also always been very in tune to the idea or the truth that, you know, sharing um some spiritual experiences or enlightenments can actually be very detrimental to a person because, you know, if the ego gets in the way and one thing leads to another, you know, it could, your reality or your, you know, your perception of truth and, and everything else can get quite distorted. And I've seen that happen in people before. So for the most part, like I kept it all to myself and, um, just carried on with the path of seek ye first 
And I just kept being very vigilant of bringing it back to God in every circumstance because, you know, I was praying every day like, God, I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure what's going on here. I know you're talking to me. I'm feeling you a lot clearer now and I'm understanding things a lot more like, thank you for this awesome experience. It felt wonderful. I feel so different. Everything around me looks different. Everything seems so more, so much more clear. So you see, um, what, what I see, I hear, I know the dance myself, that what you have done and are doing is you're creating a conversational loop. You're forever in the question mode, the supplicating mode. You're looking for things that could possibly, you open to all ideas, that could recognize that we are be you i and others are being spoken to by the divine language of light let me ask you this and please give me the short answer because i want to get to carolyn renando's renando's question in the chat room give me the short answer when this started jeremiah then you read the book of jeremiah the gates start opening and the cur kelly marie Kerr is going oh my god is this actually happening? You go, yes, it is. It's some part of you. What did that feel like? <laughs> Short Just answer. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Uplifting. Love. Like family. Ready to go. Like imagine you're somebody that you love so much. Like for me, it was my nan. Like. It, you know, it's almost like getting a, a big hug from like your favorite person in the whole world, but it just goes on and on and on. Like just this limitless love and an empowerment, you know, to feel like how, how can I share <laughs> this in a way that is going to bring light for the same way that it has done for me? Yes. And you know what? That's kind of that's kind of the it of it all. What comes along with that marriage is a knowing. I know what I'm supposed to do and not do. You may question certain moments in your life. Go back into the cyclical di dynamic with creator, the conversation. The answer becomes revealed from the chat room. Canon Renando asked a very important question, which is very on point for something, not only discussing, but something you and I briefly touched on. She asked a question, you and I both talked about, as above, so below, these different levels of all the same things playing themselves out. So when Christ was crucified in his ascension process, is what you're basically talking about, what happens in the chemical aspect of the body, the glands and all this stuff. So it is as above so below then this is what took place with him as he went through the physical manifestation of the ascension and the crucifixion and the christ and anointing and all that but likewise carolyn renando asked is adam a-d-a-m and atom a-o-m the same and before i want you to answer kelly i would like to say they're absolutely the same the birth of adam the man or the personification of the male energy first, or at least that's where we kind of get the idea was the first man. Yeah. But also Adam, the birth of the Adam, meaning the beginning of a something from nothing. What are your thoughts about that? And yeah, how I... that they so coincidentally sound the same. They're they're what is the word? Not synonymous, but uh whatever. They sound the same. Yeah, totally. And, you know, then the Bible goes on to say that God took a rib from Adam or Atom. And, you know, that was the birth of female. There's exactly the same process happening right there at a cellular level where the atom splits and, you know, then you have its counterpart. And from there, you know, physical creation can take place. So yeah, hundred percent. That is just a reflection, correspondence of, you know, the microcosm. I I've said this many times in my presentations. Everyone you hear in the ground rumble. It's not an earthquake. It's not the new Madrid fault. 
I live near an industrial train station and right now they're getting their train on. Um, but I've said this many times in my other presentations when I go into vessel mode, Yanaval mode, JB mode, as you would call it. Um, <laughs> we can laugh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I would often say that, you know, I when I go into vessel mode, Kelly, I rhyme a lot. It's just all these rhymes come out. And I'm not trying to do this. And it was said in vessel mode when spirit, I, at my higher self, when I'm not sitting in this chair and I let go to tap into that part, is that the rhyming is so purposeful. The same as atom and atom and as above, so below. That in the rhyming of two words alone, there is a relationship as to why they sound the same. So it's an offshoot of the same expression of creator with the same tonality, though the intention or so forth. Would you agree with that? 100% because the word, you know, in the beginning was the word and the, the one word, word was God and the word is God. So it's like, you know, as we speak, all of this reality is unfolding and yeah you know it's funny because my one of my friends is exactly the same we call it tongues of fire she just goes Ooh, i like that that's mode delicious where she can just and and it is the spirit you know it's like talking in tongues but in a way it's you know talking in the language that you understand and <laughs> i think that's think of part that? of like the confidence and conviction of of god coming through because you've lost that carnal reasoning and you know what you're saying so well that it can just roll off your tongue like you know like fire like spirit do you see that image on the screen i do it's gorgeous yeah and and, and i didn't know that was in my uh, queue or in my lot and when you said <laughs> tongues of fire it's like so if there's truly only one language, there's only there's only one path to God. No matter if you're Christian, Buddhist, Muslim, it's it's no, there's only one path. And if God is that one language, in the beginning was the Word, then their religion is a beautiful way to celebrate Creator. That there's really only one path, and if Creator is that tongue of fire that spoke the the word, one word, everything in the form of fragments of multiple expressions are just expressions of the one and in those fragments the one is contained it's a hologram it's a divine hologram matrix yeah yeah i say we take a break and come back and get to the thick of the sacred secretion oil and whatever it is you would like to impart to this beautiful listening audience what do you say sounds good to me Everyone, Keith Anthony Blanchard here. Yanava, Yanava, heart, will, God, ya, na, mind, balanced reasoning, intellect, va, backbone, carrying it out. This is what we're talking about in a few different ways, but it all goes back to <laughs> the word and mark my word. And my name is not Mark, <laughs> but we're going to get into some really good dialogue. I know that for sure. I trust Kelly, and I, I'm glad she's back here in Center of Light Radio. And until then, I'll see you shortly. Breathe. Deliciously breathe. Breathe like you want something beyond you've ever known. Start that dialogue. Be open to hear it, because it will reciprocate. Be right back. guide you in whatever you do. Just remember to breathe and do your very best to live in love. Give in love. Be in love. And love you shall receive.
Welcome back to Center of Light. Can this light get any brighter? I like my novelty. I love this thing. There's lots of information in there. It's my heart pouring itself out in this blast of inertia and intention of all that's good, my brother and sisterhood. John sent me an inbox message saying, tell me a little bit more about your teachings. John, my teachings are about just being a lively human creature and milking that divine teat until it's dry. And I can move up another level and receive more grace, empowering people. That's me. I love empowering people with the highest level of possible truth. I don't take my work, I do take my work lightly, actually. <laughs> That's me. Welcome aboard the Center of Light Federation, my friend. Me or not, we are all part of the Center of Light Federation. 
Because within every creature ever created, wow, is the center of light. Welcome back, Kelly Marie the Kerr. Tonight we are talking about the God design, secrets of the mind, body, and soul. Kelly, I have no idea what to ask you because I love the fact that I'm ignorant in this arena because I love learning. How do you want to move into this gorgeous interview I know you're going to deliver to me? <laughs> um, I, shall I read one As you wish, as paragraph? you wish, as you wish. Okay, um, where should we go? Okay. Uh, throughout history, this substance has been known by many names and described in various exoteric and esoteric ways. Although no two understandings are identical, they each propose the same underlying facts. The teachings include, but are not limited to, manna from heaven, macabre, the alchemical wedding, kundalini, clavis ray primae, xenogenesis, a nuclear fusion, Naronia, the crystalline dew of the adepts, the Tibetan rainbow body of light, and the Christian Christian resurrection body. Due to the power of this Ke phenomenon, Kelly, let me stop you right there, the please, information please. has been sequestered away. Kelly, let me stop you right there, please. You said something I think is very important. And give me if you, your best attempt or one or two words to describe those levels. What was the first level? Manna from heaven. What is that? Just give me a one or two words. So let's go down the list that way because this is, I think, very important information that people can say. They can keep up with your dialogue, what these meanings are. So manna from heaven. What is manna from heaven? Sustenance, taking in, being open, yeah. No, that, well, yeah, and the fact that that is the, that is the way that the um, physiological process of the transmutation of this Christ substance, that's the way, that's the terminology that is used to describe it, or one of them, in the Bible. Okay. So as um, you're in the wilderness, so to speak, you obviously are restricted from all of those um, carnal thoughts, strains, pressures from the outside world, which is, you know, what when that manna from heaven comes, it's that enlightenment. And all of those other labels, they're basically referring to that exact same thing. So the raising of the sacred secretion is, you know, kind of what it's being called in this day and age. Um, but all of these labels are just other ways, other um, vehicles that have been used to try and, you know, grasp this incredible phenomenon that is available to us. What's the second level? And just give me a word or two. You can say like level and kind of a short meaning. I think it's really important that people understand the basics of what this actually is. Um, okay, so in terms of levels, are these different uh, things you described? You said there was like seven or eight. Well, they're all that. So within that, they're all the same. Um, and what that is, the sacred secretion, um, all of those names, alchemical wedding. That is the alchemical way um, of calling it. The Kundalini, that would be the Eastern. You just so answered a question from the chat room. I love it. That was the next thing I was going to pause, uh, bring bring up when you pause, was Cal Ronaldo said, what is the Kundalini? Well, the Kundalini is the merging of two energies. So God, or, you know, the one energy divine energy in itself is androgynous but in order for us to manifest as physical beings that energy has to divide and in Kund kundalini they call mm. that apana and pran uh, prana pran, prana and 
it goes down two separate nadis, the Ida and the Pingala, and as it rises back up, that again is the, you know, successful raising preservation of the sacred secretion. So Kelly, let me ask you this. For everyone in the viewing audience, listening audience, whoever you are, you sexy, beautiful human creature, if you think about, since, thank you, Carolyn, for bringing us up, the Kundalini, the whole idea of spirituality, no matter your sect, your doctrine, your deity, you may not practice this directly or actively, but this is what everyone is doing. It's to raise the energy from the base of your lower spine, the Kundalini, through the spine, up, up the spine, all the way to the top of the head. Now, if you do this too fast, it can kick you in your pants. So, but by normal human progression and spiritual expansion, it happens. So that's the gig. But that being said, if you look at the medical staff, the caduceus, you see a staff and you see two serpents that do this up the staff and there are wings. It's the medical staff, the Western allopathic medicine staff. What does that mean? Well, it came from an earlier literature, an earlier philosophy, an earlier religion, or earlier truth, which is this idea of bringing the kundalini up, the energy up, the caduceus, the staff, and these two snakes, the DNA, as you were talking about earlier. So what are your thoughts about? Is that how it happens? And is that what these Western medicine I mean, metaphors I... mean? I think the easiest way to describe it is the fact that, you know, within our spine, we have cerebrospinal fluid that is often described as liquid light of the Bible. You know, that is the living water. And within that, you know, are all these wonderful biochemicals. And by raising our frequency and acting you know out of love and keeping thoughts of love and peace the subtle energy um or spirit that you know is basically giving us life um transforms that physical energy which is you know basically what gives us the you know the reality or, or the felt experience of enlightenment because it's amazing these layers actually you know god has created a way for us to have this physical experience within you know this reality within our lives so karen renando is on fire i don't know where she got this fire but girl i'm recognizing she posed the question or made the statement adam plus eve equals kundalini <laughs> yeah wow yeah. that's so simple and poetic because yeah. it's the dance of the divine the, yeah. the androgynous self that requires the unity between masculine and feminine to come together to birth the yeah. christ its son yes yeah because nothing if you think about it can exist without those two energies nothing nothing Wow. So, so before, before I interrupted you with asking you to break all this down, you were talking about the oil and how it begins to arise and respond in one's per, in a person's experience. Please continue from there, if you would. Um, so within the um, cerebrospinal fluid, the living water, we have melatonin, which is a derivative of tryptophan. When all of these, you know, good feelings, good actions, um, the energy through the chakras is flowing well, and mean, and that means letting go of guilt, letting go of shame, letting go of, you know, grief, and and by letting go, I mean allowing those things to process through you. So many times, you know, we tell ourselves, oh, don't cry, or, you know or sort of 
we sort of stunt ourselves from being able to really express ourselves. And, you know, obviously that's great in a way because we wouldn't all want to be out there, you know, just letting loose. But there is a time and a place where we can really take the time to process the things that we've been through and allow those blockages to be free. So when that happens and everything is flowing well in love, um, the chemicals within the CSF, mainly the melatonin, upgrades. And when the melatonin upgrades, other really powerful biochemicals come into the mix. So and what you're saying is when we operate from a place of love, a space of love, oils begin to flow. <laughs> Yeah, internally. It's, but as above, so below, of course. And that could be metaphoric when you're in an intimate, intimate, when you create an intimate with a person in a, a place of absolute spiritual ambiance, certain candles, certain music, as above, so below, on forever it will go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, you know, in that Adam and Eve scenario, again, you've got the pineal, which is the male, organ and you've got the pituitary which is the female um now a lot of people would take something called ayahuasca to have this enlightenment experience um the problem with that is you're only going to get the male half of the equation because it activates the dmt in the pineal but you don't have the female energy that would organically come from the pituitary um, in order to give you like the full holistic version of that enlightenment because you know the biochemicals that are coming from the pituitary they're only released when you are in this you know this state of of freedom and letting go and love so um you can't have one without the other you know i mean you can but the expression of it is just completely different so here we go again from the chat room, another alignment. As soon as the question in the chat room happened, you begin to talk about the third eye. So we're talking about the pineal and the pituitary. So for those who don't know exactly, not only the fact that you have two glands in your body and do a certain thing for biochemical reasons, as above, so below, everything is connected. In the beginning was the word, and in that word was everything that is infinitely possible and greater. So since you talked about the pineal and the pituitary, would you share for those who are not familiar with the chakras that they are, so did Cheryl ask as well, the difference and the purpose of the pineal and the pituitary? What are their function or their roles? So the, um, the brow chakra is in line with the pituitary, it's the seat of all intuition, if you like, the seat of that feminine divine. And the pineal is the crown chakra, which is the seat of the, the solar energy, the male intuition. And it's the unity, the unifying of those two glands that create the experience, if you like. I don't know how what you want to call it. But yeah, the raising of the sacred secretion, the alchemical wedding, nuclear fusion you know there's there are so many names that, that so how does known. this sound to you because you are a teacher of this spirituality to ever utter such utterances this is actually happening to you <laughs> well it's happening to everybody Everyone. whether they know it or not you know yes, it, but you're you're kind of a pioneer so to speak even though this is truly ancient one of the key words i entered into the software machine was early christianity yeah. as if it was somehow lost i don't think it was the loss see here's the thing when people from christianity in any sect will tell you that the bible is the word of god i am never going to say it isn't I'm going to say it's an expression of creator for sure. There's some nonsense in it. And there's just like there's nonsense everywhere in any shape, form, or fashion of life that we can seek out. It's not about any of that. It's about finding something that is a nugget that takes you to a magical, special place. 
And I've learned that everything is so interconnected. It's so interconnected. Words, conversation, these little things that happen in the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. Early Christianity, I think a lot of it was lost. Not lost, but as I was going to say, and I got sidetracked or forgot, is that Well, the earliest the, the scenes... truth, the truth, excuse me, the truth is actually elusive for a reason. Because it requires one to be willing to be stripped, to do that research, to find something that is more important. Because if it was just something that just laid around everywhere, like a newspaper on the couch or on the table, it kind of loses its importance. So it makes us want it, like really to dig. Yeah. And also the fact that, you know, it's not available to us if, you know, we're not in that kind of aligned state is a really beautiful thing because, you know, God, God's designs are perfect. It's like you can't abuse this because... It's not available to abuse. And it's for our own sake, whether we like it or not, it's for our own yeah. sake. I've always said, you cannot bring lower level consciousness into the kingdom of pure consciousness because that would create a cancer cell with the potential to break the system down. It will never, never happen. Whether you believe or you don't believe, it just will never happen. Yeah, definitely. And isn't it a very amazing place, Kelly, that you have found yourself from however long ago this started, though it's been with you all of your life, but this particular event and time and space in your life till now, that that space is something in our adolescence we never thought was freaking possible. And now it's just this very simple joy of being nowhere and doing nothing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the realization of love and the really important things in life just change everything, actually. Because you realize, you know, how much happiness matters and how much you want to see goodness everywhere around you. And how much you want to be a part of the collective consciousness raising because you know i really do believe that this light is unstoppable this awakening that occurring that's occurring you know across the globe it, it's just undeniable and it's going to give back everything that the darkness has tried to take from and humanity so we're, we're not actually anti dark it's not that we're also no no no, no 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 i don't behavior. mean it in that right. sense. of course you don't of course you don't absolutely absolutely and so we're at this place right now i i know it like you in my bones to my soul that it's it's really you know many people will say well i feel the same way i want the same things you want that people are happy all around the world everybody is nourished everybody is uh, taken care of, everybody one is attended to. That's wonderful. There are deeper levels of wanting that, which Kelly, I, and many of you viewers out there, it's not about just, well, I want the same thing. It's about, oh my God, this is so delicious. I am so involved, involved. I am involved. And therefore I can evolve and resolve all this stuff is this what it feels like to be you that in the work that you're doing, Kelly, you are coming back not only to center, but your origin? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's incredible to see how every little step of my life led up to this without me knowing it. And, you know, once you finally let go of what you think you want, 
or what you think is going to be best for you on a very like um, reality, physical based level, carnal, you know, biblically, they would use the word carnal. But I know like it's hard because a lot of people don't fully understand what that word means. But I mean, I'm talking about like our attraction to physical items and feelings, if you like. Once all of that's gone, it's you move into this place or I moved into this place where actually those things just come really without you giving much thought for them and it's just really strange how backwards things work actually if that makes sense Kelly we have I'm going to extend my time with you if that's okay with you I don't want to I know you are six hours advanced from me and you have a beautiful little boy and husband and a life so I don't want to keep you any longer than you need to. Are you good for, let's say, let me see what time it is for me. And it's, are you good for another 40, 45 minutes? Yeah. Um, 20? 20 sounds wonderful. Split the yeah. difference. I'm going to be right back. Short commercial break. We're going to be back. And Kelly, um, I get so involved when I learn something new. I want to just devour the conversation, so forgive me. But when we come back, can you please continue with one of these imaginary videos you would be making on YouTube about your work, why it's important to you, and all that beautiful stuff that can help everybody understand what it is you're doing with this sacred secretion Christ oil. Sure. Love it. Stick around, everybody. Going to be right back. Keith Anthony Blanchett with Kelly Marie Kerr. See you shortly. Remember that all things are possible. You must choose to be accountable, responsible, enough to believe, and open your heart to receive.
for you to plan out your life Seeing what you do by your own design It's all up to you to make it what you can It's of your own free will, what don't you understand? Welcome back to Center of Light. Keith Anthony Blanchard here. Yanava, heart, ya, God, will, na, mind, balance, reasoning, true understanding, enlightenment. Backbone, va, yanava. Center of Light Radio. Tonight my guest is Miss Kelly Marie Kerr and we're talking about the God design, secrets of the mind, body, and so I am not sure if I, I'm definitely not going to do my presentation that I talked about tonight. I'm not going to get into it. It's just too dark. I'm just not going to do it. It doesn't bring joy, even though it would be very informative. It doesn't feel right in my spine, in my heart. And I'm, I have another presentation um, available that I will do. I'm not sure. Worst case scenario, I will start this at 930 if I do it or nine or earliest. Welcome to Center of Light. Let's welcome back Miss Kelly Marie Kerr. The Kerr. Hey, baby girl. Hi, JB. <laughs> What's up, Emil? Emil? <laughs> Everyone, um, Kelly Marie Kerr. She's going to tell us, like, from her heart and soul about her work. Lay it on me, girl. So, basically, I started um to metaphysically um translate revelation um all the books of revelations and i'm up to actually i'm getting ready to publish um the video for revelation 4 in the next couple of days and um it's really driven by this passion to unpack um the the deeper meanings of the scriptures and what they mean inside the body in terms of not just our physical substances and you know the fearfully and wonderfully made body in, in a physical way but also like in an emotional way and you know the first book of revelation just introduces those seven chakras in the form of the seven churches and the seven seals um, for what's blocking those energy centers and um, then Revelation 2, kind of uh, at 2 and 3, and the beginning of 4 even, delves close, more closely into what the blockages are for each specific chakra or church or energy centre, depending on which you prefer to call it. Um, and then, yeah, moving into um, the uh, book 4, um, or chapter four, I should say, um, it, it really starts to go into detail as to, you know, what John sees when he has this vision of enlightenment, this vision of Christ. And it's just explaining the different John? meanings. John? Who's John? <laughs> I don't know. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, please continue. I just had to throw that in there for fun. Let me a higher consciousness <laughs> um yeah so you know the beasts that are seen and the, they're a reoccurring theme of course throughout the bible they're also seen in ezekiel um and what they mean in terms of the sacred name 
um, and what they mean in terms of the different faces that, you know, we've been given in order to really realise our true potential as human beings, as light beings, you know, the ox, the cat, um, the lion, the eagle and the man all working together, the north, the south, the east, the west, the yod hey, wa hey, um, of the sacred name. You know, it's just incredible the correspondences and and mapping them out and putting them together in a way that people can kind of try to really digest it and try to see the links for themselves um because so, so kelly when you when you get quote your teachings kelly's doing the laundry kelly's doing the dishes or and you supplicate and you do the work and you ask a question when you get it, it's like there's a knowing that you have to continue to move forward with this particular piece of this love nugget, this knowledge that you have. And there's no way you cannot do it. Would you say that would be correct? Definitely. I mean, I've always had this um, blessing stroke curse of a personality trait where once I start something, I cannot put it down. I like... <laughs> I go for that finish line um, like you wouldn't believe. So there's that. Um, but, yeah, also, you know, my good friend Catherine, are you still there? Um, we call her Puff, but not for I don't for think she's here. I, I haven't seen her in a while. Okay. Well, you know, we grow over the last, you know, however long have, discussed revelation in so much detail and you know is the end of the world near and you know all of these huge questions that so many people have and you know you haven't got to look far to find a you know a big spectrum of you know views on this you know yes we're on the brink of devastation um you know through natural disasters and all the rest of it and yes part of that is happening um and you know but you know for me revelation is a really a book about the revelation of know thyself you know seek ye first what what's happening internally back to the, back to the basics back to the basics of we seek ye first yeah right yeah the basics all right love yeah it. yeah and then, you know, after I've finished Revelation, so I've got another, after I publish this video, I've got another um, 18 chapters to go. So that's going to take me a while. Um, I've had loads of requests for different books um, to do in the same manner. So maybe I'll go on to do that. But whatever it is, like it will be, it will be led by, you know, by God and by whatever um, I really feel in my heart is the thing that, you know, I'm being asked the most with the book. You know, the book was born out of mostly comments on that original YouTube explainer video that I did. People saying, no, the sacred secretion is this. No, the sacred secretion is that you're wrong no you're wrong what's this is it dmt is it just this so i really really felt so inspired to put it all in one place so that you can really see the links see the parallels see you did that very very well in the video i played at the very beginning of this interview and for everyone in the listening audience kelly please announce your website quickly and your YouTube channel. It's um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Uh, website is www.seekvision.co.uk, and my YouTube channel is literally just my name, Kelly Marie Kerr, K E double -R, R. I'm just a sitting lot here. Of, go ahead, go ahead, darling. Um, yeah, uh, one of the comments that I get a lot and a lot of 
the direct messages that I get from people is, where are you getting this information? <laughs> where can I get it? Is there a course? Um, you know, the course is to seek you first. <laughs> um, that, is, that so brings it right again back down to the basics. The yeah. master himself said... Thinking. It's kind of like the default position. Every time you, you get a little static and you get a little monkey-minded, just turn your computer off and reboot it. Just reboot yourself, man. Yeah. I think people think that, you know, this whole getting off the grid thing is like, you it's know, something, something that you've got to do to, like, combat yeah. the world. But actually what you do by bringing yourself back and withdrawing from everything is you just give yourself the time and and your spirit the space that it needs to develop and unfold and hear god because there's so many distractions like it can be really difficult to discern the difference between seeing a synchronicity and really understanding what it means and what, you know, you're learning in that moment. Kelly, before we disconnect, let me ask you one final question. Do you find that when you're doing that thing, that Kelly Marie the Kerr thing, absorbing, because you've been in the cyclical nature of question and answer, question and answer. Question and answer is the dance it's the Kundalini of the male and the female. It's the Adam and the Eve that's coming together in this dance, right? So do you find that as you go about this, that your 24 hours in a day are not 24 hours anymore. We're actually superseding this mental construct that it's like, wow, I am truly a time traveler. I'm so beyond. Are you feeling that? Do you? I, I know you. Do. I, it's a stupid question. I know you do, right? A hundred percent. You know, there are times when my little boy, you know, would go down for a nap and I would think to myself, right, I've got about an hour. How much can I get done? But, you know, then I would look down at the time and I would feel like four hours had gone by, but yet I would still have half an hour left of real time. So, you know, to say that, yeah, my time has been divinely multiplied is 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 very, yeah, it's, it's been incredible. I Like my mind has been blown continuously <laughs> over and over and over again by what is possible when you're, you know, walking on your spiritual path. Thank you for being here on Center of Light Radio, dear. Thanks. You are a powerful beacon of light. Is there anything you would like to share in closing as a final thought or anything? And again, after that, please share your contact information again. Everyone, please follow. At least be open to the idea of this beautiful work. It's amazing. I, I, I'm newbie at it as well. And I, I know, know that... <laughs> I know that um, you're not going to go into detail about what you were planning to perhaps do afterwards. I'm open to, the, I'm open to being vulnerable and but having a discussion with you. Yes, I am. What, what I wanted to say is that because I think of the nature of the sacred secretion and what it sounds like, I do get quite a lot of comments on my videos about the topic that you were going to discuss. Um, and you know, like it is horrendous. Um, you know, I just, I can't imagine. And, um, it's not fun at all, even to postulate something that is absolutely happening. It's yeah. Not fun. It's not fun. And I think, um, something that I, I try to reply as and when, you know, time permits to people that ask me about this. Um, I just always say the same thing. Um, you know, let's really just collectively raise the vibration around it, whether whatever that is for you, if that is to pray on your hands and knees, if that is to meditate and send light energy, 
however you, you know, manifest your light in giving, um, you know, let's really seek to um, seek. expose <laughs> and shed a light so, you know, that because it, 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 whatever happens in darkness comes to light. So that, that day will come um, and, you know, it needs to come. So let's just do that together, all of us. Please give out your contact you. Um, it's www.seekvision.co.uk. YouTube channel is Kelly Marie Kerr. Uh, this is my book. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And I told you this three times. This is the third time I told you that that cover is so easy to take in. It's not untrue. It's, it's just easy to look at. And there's a lot of pictograms there. There's a lot of uh, information in uh, the graphics there, the pine gland, the pine cone, and so forth and so on. Yeah. The trinity of glands. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Keith. You're absolutely welcome. You're always welcome here. Keep, keep us posted on what you're doing, anything new. Hey, Keith, I want to get on. We'll create a date. <laughs> it's all good. Peace and light, everyone. Everyone, Kelly Marie Kerr, tonight we talked about the God design, secrets of the body, mind, body, and soul. Let me get to my outro screen. I think I will do a presentation. It is about 8.39, 9.15. If you want to meet me on my wall, it will not be about the theme that I was going to do. It'll be something else, better, higher vibrational. I will explain a little more in just a little bit. You are valuable to me. You are my life currency. 